This video, an entire series of videos, is about the Leo James AL DIY guitar kit. And I am doing a nitrocellulose lacquer finish from Oxford Guitar Supply. And I've created a series of videos that outlines what I've learned during each step of this process. I hope this will help you create an awesome guitar like mine. And if you're interested, please subscribe and follow along with this series. And feel free to leave any comments. I'd love to start a discussion. Step one in this process is surface preparation. So we're first going to sand the entire guitar and neck with 320 grit sandpaper. And then we're going to wet the guitar down to let the grain swell. Let that dry and then sand it a second time with 320 grain. And then it just gets cleaned off with mineral spirits. And then part two will be grain fill. Welcome to the Leo James AL Finishing Guitar Series. I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process of everything I did to make this kit come to life into a badass, semi-professional looking guitar. Step one is surface preparation. Before I do that and start sanding, I'm going to tape off any area that I don't want to scuff accidentally. So here I am taping off the fretboard, very meticulously finding that line along the side, the white markers along the side. I'm kind of using that as a guide. I've also taped off the entire nut area and I'm covering up the entire fretboard because I don't want my awesome beautiful fretboard to be uh, scuffed while I'm sanding or you know accidentally knocked or dinged or something so all right that looks beautiful goodbye beautiful fretboard I'll see you in a few months So what I'm doing here is making a sanding block. I just had some extra little pieces of like laminate wood laying around, which was just the perfect size. So they're just scraps that I found. They're just the right size to create a nice level surface, about four by six uh, to sand with. So I'm um, using my 320 grit first and I'm taping that onto my sanding block. And the extra piece on the side is going to be used for hand sanding uh, into corners and curves and small spaces. So I have one piece on the sanding block and then one piece just kind of extra that I can use as a hand sander whenever I need to use that. So the first step is to sand all your surfaces with 320 grit. Always sand with the grain at this step. If you use too fine of a grit you may experience adhesion problems later on. So here's where you can do a lot of your you know shaping and smoothing. This this wood is really raw. And I'm always wiping as I'm working. I'll sand a little bit and wipe away the dust so I can see what I'm doing. Something else I constantly do is feel it with my hand, right? Sometimes they say close your eyes and just feel the wood and you can feel the rough spots. You know, some spots need a little more attention than others. I'm also smoothing out this neck pocket a little bit. But later on I'm also going to smooth out all of the uh, inserts and cavities in this guitar. Be very careful of the bevels. The bevels and the edges on this guitar are probably going to be the hardest thing throughout it. So just take your time. Concentrate on what you're doing and you should be fine. So just kind of use you know, some different angles and different techniques when needed. You know, position the guitar in different positions you know, as needed put on some music and enjoy. So 
So after you've sanded the entire guitar, and don't forget the neck with 320, Okay, so I've just done my first sanding with the 320 and now according to Oxford supply instructions. Dampen a cloth with water and wipe down all the surfaces. This will swell and raise the grain. Wait approximately 10 to 20 minutes for the surface to dry and then sand with 320 again. By sanding once the grain has been raised, you lower the risk of grain patterns showing through once the finish has been leveled. Once sanding is complete, wipe down all the surfaces with mineral spirits to ensure it's clean and free of oils from handling. Now I'm not saturating the wood, I just have a wet red, a wet shop towel, and I'm gonna wipe it down. I can feel, oh look at that, I can feel it's wet, I can feel the grain starting to come out. I hope they're right. And we're going to sand that off. Those bevels still make me real nervous. Alright, oh jeez, that wood is wet. Uh, all right, we're gonna let that dry, see what happens. And don't forget the neck, the neck, the neck, the neck. So this guitar is a little bit rough. A little, the wood is very rough and raw when you get it. So when, once you start sanding, you realize that. So here, like I really, um, I'm gonna do this now because I know I'm gonna hate myself later if I don't, but I'm just taking a piece of hand sandpaper and I'm getting into every um, cutout area and just getting in there with a hand sander and I'm just smoothing everything out as best I can. Um, all these edges like the tremolo cavity is going to be exposed so I want that rounded off. I want that to look nice and you know the other thing is that the edges on that you get are very sharp edges and when you go to your painting steps and final finishing steps a sharp edge like a 90 degree angle sharp edge less paint is going to collect there so if you have a rounded or more beveled or rounded edge you have a better chance of more paint collecting in those areas than a sharp corner so when you go to your finishing and final stages uh, you might have an easier time with um, not scraping uh, color layer off your, you know, your color layers or base layers off of the sharp edges so I'm trying to get everything as rounded as possible you know and especially you know, all those little all those little cavities and anything that I think might be exposed in the end I want that to uh, be smooth you know and look finished and look professional um, they give you a really nice product to work with and so it just takes a little bit of um, you know, a little bit of, of, of sight and feel for it to um, really make it, you know, as professional looking as you can. I've never done anything like this before. Everything I've learned was from watching on YouTube. So, you know, I have some basic, you know, woodworking skills. and I've done basic sanding and stuff before, but um, you also want to use... Uh, a wide block. I'm using this wide sanding block because any large flat surface you want a large flat surface to sand with. Uh, smaller areas or curves, you know, I got to get in there with my hand and fingers and use some hand sanding techniques. But like anything that's flat or flat large surface, you want to use that block because your fingers can create divots, right? If you're, you know, your fingers will press in in certain spots and you could create, you know, divots or imperfections or, you know, just kind of like peaks and valleys. So 
using that sanding block as much as possible on the large areas uh, is what you want to do. And um, I'm going to do one last field check. You know, here is also an opportunity to you know round off those edges and like clean up anything. You know, any kind of you know shaping you end up doing uh, might be there in the end result. So. I'm just going to feel everything by hand and it's so smooth, it feels so good. All in here, this neck feels great. I'm leaving this section, you know, a little bit rough. I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit so it slides in smooth and make contact on all points. This is going to have to, this neck's going to get glued in. So, you know, I just cleaned it up a little bit but I think you still want to leave it maybe rough. But um, I think this feels great, right? These bevels are really are challenging. You don't want to reshape that or flatten them out, but I think I did a pretty good job. Some of these spots are hard, feel something in there. You know, don't just take what they give you. Add your little flair to it, you know? I wonder if, like that edge, I probably want to smooth that edge out a little bit. All right, because that, anything that's not gonna affect, because definitely like your hand's gonna go in there. You want a nice round edge, huh? That's gonna stay sharp. And this is going to get sanded again with 400 in the next step, which is uh, grain fill. So, I'm saying let's, let's do it. Let's see what this grain fill is all about. Uh, this, feels, this feels great though. I don't think anything you missed, you know. Kind of, I think I'm pretty happy with the way this feels. Everything is as smooth as can be all around. I rounded out my cavities, sanded inside there a little bit, but this looks, I feel much better about this, uh, this tremolo cavity here with the, it's gonna have nice rounded edges. You're gonna, you're gonna see, see some of that outline there. So, all right, last step is to, uh, I got my gloves on and I'm gonna take a shot rag and some mineral spirits and wipe everything down. Let it dry, come back for the next step. Mineral spirits will not make the wood swell. Again. And it's going to remove any oils from your fingers, your dirty fingers, your dirty oily fingers that have been touching this. It smells nice too on the wood. I'm going to give this a good rub down, get it nice and clean. I'm going to do my best to be very thorough with everything. Okay, so part one, surface preparation. We sand the body and neck once with 320, wet the wood down to let the grain swell, let that dry, sand it a second time with 320, 
And now I just finished wiping everything down with mineral spirits to get it nice and clean. I'm going to let this dry overnight and come back tomorrow. Check out part two, which is the next step in this process is to do a grain fill on the wood. Thanks for watching. Keep on rocking, folks.